Okay, I've got a question that I would like to ask. Um, I'm about ready to start turning my lathe back on after moving from another location. And I had held all of my tools in uh, things that I had turned on or made on the 3D printer to where the handles were above and they hung down. And I'm wondering yeah, uh, what some uh, of the other people have and use, like Scott, right. I was That's just true. noticing him, which he's got one that I think I've well, seen quite well, often too. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 Gary, Gary, yes, Gary, give us a second. We have an audio, we have somebody on audio, and I got somebody's it. gonna get it. All right, now, go ahead, Gary, thank you. Uh, okay, um, what, I'd kind of like to get a consensus or some input on what different people think to where like Scott, you, I can see his little picture yet uh, on the top of my screen where he lays them into a rack. The handles are at the bottom and they point the um, tool cutter is, is up to where I had them with the opposite and they hung. Uh, what are some other people's comments? Uh, I did see from Dane, he has his where he's got holes in uh, uh, a board and they just slide in. Uh, what are some other ideas? Because I'm now at the point where I've got to start, uh, what am I gonna do with my tools so I can start turning the lathe back on? Well, it, one of your first, one of your first best things to go after this with is that a, uh, a one inch PVC pipe makes a great tool holder. So, you know, you can you can add them in any number of different configurations to hold tools with the metal part inside the pipe. Now, I did that with my tools that uh, where I can take the uh, uh, tool out of the handle. I had some of those and they were also vertical uh, for that. Uh, so any other ideas of how people are, are doing theirs? Okay, well, I, I've got two. If you look, if you go to my picture, I've got two right. different ones. Of, so, so let me, uh, tools. so while I'm, so folks, while I'm going to Scott, if you would like to, if anyone would like to share how they have their tools situated, uh, you go, go, run to, go run to your shop, and then after Scott, we can span through, you know, however many people, you know, here. We still got to get through uh, six or seven gallery items, but, um, you know, let's, let, let's, let's run through this quickly. Okay, so. I, I, have, I, I can show mine after Scott. Okay. This is, this is a rolling cart. It's like a, almost, you know, it's, it's like this slanted. And it is. Yeah. So everything yeah. just rest there it won't fall out it's on wheels so i can roll it around and it, if you see on my back wall that's a whole different way of storing your tools if you have uh, wall space that's really good but those are have holes drilled in them and i just slide the tools down in there and it's solid on the bottom i created the shallow holes so the bottom of the tools just rest in it oh, up there so they don't like slide around or anything they just rest right in those shallow holes in the bottom board there and yes, i find that one you know i put that i, I put my less used tools in, in the wall rack i can still reach them but those are the ones i don't really grab a lot or use a lot and for this one the one that's two-sided one side i keep most of my bowl gouges and bowl making chisels on on the top and the back side for my spindle work and then the bottom level, I keep my scrapers and parting tools and things like that. Nice so, ideas, yeah. Yeah, and um, these little things right here, the little holders, those are just the hooks you put in your garage wall to hang like like rakes and stuff. That's all those are. And I just screwed them into the plywood, different levels because of the different size tools I have. All right, let's go to uh, Matt and see what he's doing. Hey, Matt. Hey, let me share this. This is my tool rack. This sits. This hangs from my uh, from my uh, 
light hanging structure that I built that's just made from two by fours, which you can see behind it. Um, what this is, it hangs above the, my tailstock on my lathe. What this is, is a little rack that came out of a kitchen drawer to hold trays. And what I did is I, I cut it lengthwise. That You can see the little walnut dowel on the bottom I made. I cut it lengthwise and widened it so it would hold the tools because it was more narrow. What again, what again was that originally? It was a it was a rack in a kit in a pull out kitchen drawer that held trays and stuff. Ah, okay, pull out kitchen door rack. Yeah. So and it, it's just and all I did was was widen it. I, I cut it. You know, I made two cuts in the the crossbars and then added twelve inches in the middle there to make it wider. And it hangs, and I actually canted it. The bottom is canted is more forward than the than the top is to give it more of a slant, so the tools can kind of like, you know, roll in the back when I put them in the little bits, in the little sections there. So okay. that's another way to do it. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And then just for the benefit of everyone else, I'll go ahead and and reshow my tool rack. Spotlight this bad boy around. So obviously there's the lathe. So I got my rack made. So it's two boards. I, I put them together and then drilled them out with two inch holes, four center bit holes. And I tried to make the rack to be the last rack I would need and to use up all utilization of the space available where I wanted to put them. So I wanted to have them at hand's reach while I'm at the lathe. Um, and then on the bottom, I included a shelf for specialty stuff that's uh, not gonna go into a hole, like my threading tools, and my beel threader, and some various other items. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a quick, easy, you can, you can readily see what tool it is. You're looking at it. And of course, I've got everything organized based on whether it's bowl gouge, spindle gouges, skews, box scrapers, and specialty tools in the center on the far right. And of course, the holes are big enough to hold uh, my various tool rests. So, and that's how I do mine. Tim Hatch had one also to show. Him. All right, hey, that's I, good. I don't. I'm not in my shop and uh, don't have access because I'm traveling right now, but I, I took an old shop made wooden stool. Uh, I screwed on a piece of three quarter inch plywood to that wooden stool and drilled some holes in it. And then my, my tools go down fairly in and I've got uh, probably about 15. I don't, I definitely don't have as many as, as Dane has. The only caveat I have with that, make sure that uh, when you're moving your rack around, I'm, because I have multiple lays in there, I move the tool rack to the lay that I'm working on. Um, but uh, just make sure that you have some type of protection. Um, Mike Peace did a uh, thing on one of his YouTube videos on tool storage for when he's going out transporting doing demos and things, he uses a five gallon bucket and he uses the uh, one inch PVC pipe stuck in the five gallon bucket and then he puts all his tools in. That way everything's, all the sharp points are protected. So just an option. Very good, very good. And then one other option um, that is frequently used. In fact, I think I think Mike, Mike Peace has even got a demo on it. He takes an old um, office chair, takes the chair off of it, and then makes a spindle, take some construction grade material, you know, plywood, um, drill your holes. And then another piece of uh, construction grade and shoves the handles down in vertically with the points being down. And then that allows you to push and, and move that, that tool rack around. Uh, so Doug Rowe has one like that. And I want to say, um, Pretty sure Brenda's got one as well, but Brenda's already ducked out. She had to go eat. Um, otherwise, um, we'll try to remember to bring this up next week when Brenda's back on, Gary, and then definitely when uh, Doug Rowe is back on. 
you know, hopefully it gives you some ideas. Um, we've got those shop uh, stools too that you can kind of raise and lower. Yeah. Uh, they're not that expensive. That may be a good base for something like that. Even. And I would look at the secondhand stores, Goodwill and, and Savers and whatnot for, you know, those type of stools and, and old office chairs. You can probably get, you know, for a few, you know, less than $10. I got one I'd like to show. This, uh, Let's see, who's this? Can you, can you highlight me? I've got it on my phone yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob. yeah. Um, what I did, let's see if I can focus. I took a two drawer file cabinet and, well, how to do that? Okay. I took a two drawer file cabinet and uh, made a frame around it with uh, plywood and put tools on each side. Let me shrink it down here. So one side, was it showing up, but one side, each side has tools on it, and then the back has sandpaper on it, and the front has the drawers from the file cabinet, and then three shelves that pull out. And I can store everything in that, and it's a space 15 inches wide by two inches, two feet deep, and about four feet tall. And, and I can store awesome. almost all my tools in that. And it's right. got wheels, so I can roll it out. That's a great idea. I wish yeah. I could show it, but it's on my phone and it's not picking it's not picking up the picture very well or at all. But anyway, it works real well. And I use PVC pipe on the side and put a uh, wire underneath it so the tools don't go all the way through if the handle's down. Hey Bob, could you send that send me that photo in in a, in a text message <coughs> and then I'll sure, get it to Gary. What's your email? Oh, my email's too too difficult to spell out. Oh well, put it put it in the chat. No, here we go. That'll work. 